Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you're watching this. I am Mrs. Hurst, and this lesson is going to talk about algebra review. If this is your first flipped lesson, make sure that you are taking notes, writing down the examples, pause so that you can do the examples with us or before us and check your answers, and make sure that if you miss anything that you are able to rewind, so we want to make sure you know that. All right, let's go ahead and get started today. And there are a couple topics, major topics, in algebra one that you still need to know in order to do geometry, okay? You need to know how to simplify it by combining like terms. You need to know how to solve equations, one step, two step, multi-step, variables on both sides. You need to know how to use formulas, um, cross multiplication with ratios and proportions, and really need to know how to simplify radicals. We're gonna talk about all of that today, starting with combining like terms. So looking at this example, this is one expression. We've got a whole bunch of terms up here. Most of them have x's, but we want to make sure to differentiate between different types of x's. This term has an x to the third power, as does this term. They are like terms. Then we have these guys with x squared that are like terms. And we have just our x's. And then we would call the other guys, the last ones up here, are constants. Okay? Keep in mind that the sign directly to the left or in front of each term is the sign that we're going to associate with it. So when I go to combine 4x cubed and 6x cubed, I'm going to add, giving me 10x cubed. So the exponent stays the same. Hopefully you remember doing this in algebra 1. For the x squared, notice this is a minus. Two. So we're going to do minus 2x squared plus 3x squared. So we're thinking, what is negative 2 plus 3? And I'm going to get positive 1. And I don't need to write down that coefficient of 1. You're more than welcome to, though. All right, since it was positive, I did write a plus sign. For my x's, we're going to do plus 3x minus 8x. So what is 3 minus 8? Well, think about it this way. 8 minus 3 is 5. Since 8 is a bigger number than 3 and it's negative, we're going to have minus 5x. And my constants, we're going to do negative 7 plus 9, which is really the same thing as 9 minus 7, so we're going to get plus 2. So to simplify this expression by combining like terms, this would be my final answer. Oops. All right, so let's go ahead and solve some equations with variables on both sides. Now, these are going to end up working their way down to one-step and two-step equations, so we'll review that process at the same time. The first thing I like to do is look at the, let, um, the variables, the terms with variables, and figure out which number is bigger, okay? Since this 6m is bigger, I'm going to... So we're going to move the 4m over to the other side. Now, remember, we're going to do the opposite operation. Since this is a positive 4, we're going to subtract 4m from both sides of the equation. Well, 4m minus 4m, that cancels out, leaving me with minus 2 equals. 6 minus 4 gives me 2m plus 8. So now we're down to a smaller equation, variables on one, um, one side. And I want to get that variable by itself. So we're going to move this constant 8 out of the way. It's plus 8, we're going to minus 8. So negative 2 minus 8, I get negative 10 equals, over here the 8's cancel out, and I'm left with 2m. Well, now we're down to a one-step equation. To get rid of m, or excuse me, to get m by itself, I need to isolate it. Well, 2 and m right now are multiplied together. To undo multiplication, we are going to divide. So I'm going to divide the right side by 2. Got to do the same thing on the other side, so we get negative 5 is equal to m. And we can leave our answer like this. Go ahead and pause right now and see if you can solve the second equation up here, and then compare your answer to mine when we're done. All right, so now that we've looked at this first equation as your example, you've tried the second one, this is what I've got going on. I'm just going to speed through it. I'm adding 8n to both sides, so I get 9 equals 14n minus 5. Adding 5 to both sides, and I get 14 equals 14n. Divided by 14, and I get 1 equals n. How'd you do? Okay, hopefully you guys got that right. All right, so let's look at formulas. And we're, we're kind of talking about right now, not necessarily any formulas that you've seen before, but plugging in and evaluating expressions. 
So we've got these values up here. A is 4, B is negative 6, C is negative 2, and D is 3. So in this expression or formula, 2A minus 3B, I want to plug in the values they told me. Keep in mind, this is 2 times A, this is 3 times B, okay? All right, so let's do this one. 2 times 4 minus 3 times negative 6. And I like to write it out first before I do the math just to avoid making any mistakes. 2 times 4 is 8 minus, so this minus is coming down, so now I'm just going to do 3. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. So what do I do now that there are two minus signs? Well, two minus signs I can turn into one giant plus sign. This becomes 8 plus 18. And 8 plus 18 is going to give me 26. So we've evaluated this expression and gotten 26. Try the next one on your own and we see if we get the same answer. All right, so our final answer for this one, we should have gotten 8. Okay? If you have any questions on this, bring it to class or um, ask us at the end of the lesson. All right, let's look at some other topics. We've got two more topics to talk about that you need to know for geometry, cross multiplication. All right, so we've got two fractions equal to each other. It's known as a proportion, and you've done this before in several of your other classes. We're going to go ahead and cross multiply. So x times 4 equals 28 times 3, which is 84. And now I can solve it like a one-step equation. Divide by 4, and we get x equals 21. Now I'm going to start you off on this next one before you pause, and so you guys can get started and see if you can work it on your own after I start. To start this problem off, when I cross multiply, I want to use the distributive property. So that's going to look like 7 times the quantity of x plus 8. And then over here, 2 times 35, I get 70. Okay, go ahead and pause this now and see if you can finish working the problem out, and we'll go from there. Alright, so you should have gotten 7x plus 56 equals 70. So a two-step equation, subtract your 56. You get 7x equals 14, divide by 7, and we get x equals 2. So, how'd you do? Again, did, hopefully you got the right answer. If not, this is a good place to write down a question that you're still confused about. We can do some more practice in class. Last topic that we're going to talk about today in this lesson is radicals. So, square roots. All right, we want to come up with the number that happens to be repeatedly multiplied by itself in these problems. We're going to break this down using factor trees. The square root of 75, the first numbers I think of are 25 times 3. I usually think of 75s, 100s, 25s, 50s when it makes me think of money quarters. So that's kind of where I'm going with that. Well, 3 is a prime number, so it's done. But 25 can keep going. And 25 breaks down to be 5 times 5. So if I bring this down to the same level, we're looking at all of our prime factors, 5, 5, and 3. We're looking to see if anything repeats. And I have a set of 5s. Well, that set of 5s tells me that 5 repeats. So I'm going to write down 5, then the square root sign, and everything that didn't repeat goes back under the radical. If I had more stuff under the radical that didn't repeat, I'd multiply it back together. But my final answer here read at, is read as 5 square roots of 3. Okay, looking at the square root of 48, go ahead and try that on your own. Break it down so it's all prime numbers and see what you come up with. Okay, hopefully you guys finished that. Your final answer should be 4 square roots of 3. Okay, let's look at the next one together though because there's already a number on the outside. This guy is going to get multiplied with whatever comes out from underneath the radical. So we'll break this down first. The square root of 20, I'm going to break down 20 as 5 times 4. 5 doesn't break down, 4 does. 2 times 2. So I have a repeated number. There's a pair of 2's. There's already a 2 on the outside. We're going to write him down first. Times whatever I'm about to do. Since there's a pair of 2's here, I'm going to write down another 2. If that were a pair of 3's, this number would be a 3. If that were a pair of 4's, this would be a 4. But we've got a pair of 2's. Back under the radical is my 5. Okay, so let's actually simplify this. 2 times 2, I get 4. 
square roots of 5. All right, last problem. See if you guys can do that on your own. Did you come up with the answer for square roots of 15? If you did, you did a great job. And we are done with notes for today. So keep in mind that we do use algebra in geometry daily. You are expected to solve equations pretty much on a daily basis to evaluate expressions. So keep practicing this skill. We'll see you tomorrow.